Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. And today's game up on the tabletop is Pest by Arcana Games. This is a one to five player game that takes roughly 60 to 150 minutes to play. It's a long one. And it's for ages 13 and up. And in the game Pest, you're playing as a plague doctor. Uh, the plague doctors have a history based on medieval Europe, in which case the bubonic plague, the black plague or black death spread around the countryside and killed millions and millions of people. Uh, this game is kind of based in a fantasy world uh, with that type of plague, but instead of the Black Plague, it's called Pest. And you're still playing as the Plague Doctors, the healers that roam from town to town curing the sick. In this game, you are playing a worker placement game, utilizing your workers or assistants uh, to assist your Plague Doctor as he goes from town to town gathering six people, sick people, placing them in the infirmary, healing them, and then giving them jobs, whether it be to help along with the buildings they are creating in the different countrysides, or whether it is to utilize them for processing resources to gain new technology for your kingdom. Gather your kingdom, protect the sick, heal the land, and become the best at it. And if you can do that, you'll win the game. In this review, I'll cover the very basic idea of setup, not the full thing, but the basic idea, and the basic idea of how you play the game, and then we'll give you my review. Pest has five main areas for setup. This is a big boy game. The first thing you need to do is take out the main game board and place it within reach of all players. Every player that's playing is also going to receive a player board, as well as there are two separate areas for the capital city and for your influence. The other area is for the eras. This is for the rounds of play. We'll cover each one of these individually. The first one is the main game board. It's where you're going to be placing destruction markers based on the number of players if it has a symbol and it has the doesn't have the uh, number that you're playing with or sorry if it does you will take this marker and place it down on that specific location that way you'll have less areas that you can actually not travel you can still travel through them but you cannot utilize them in the game and you'll also place sick people these little green meeples on each of the areas that has the little green sick meeple on it that hasn't been covered additionally each player is going to get a starting location card Card. This card is going to have three little dots on it, and that's where you can place your Plague Doctor on the game board. Just make sure you look at it, assign your Doctor to the correct location, and make sure your Doctor has the color of the uh, choice that you want to play with. There is yellow, there is white, there is pink, and there is red, and there is blue. And that's pretty much what you do for the main game board. You can place all the tokens and markers around the game board that you need to play with. The influence board's simple. You'll place the influence markers based on the turn order you want to start with. Take your influence and place them on the zero. The capital board is going to have your technologies. You'll shuffle up the deck and place five out and place each of the capital city pieces onto their corresponding marker locations. The era board, you're going to take three of the eras. Each era has two years, and on the front of the era card is going to say era one, two, and three. Place one at the very bottom and place it face up, uh, number two, and then number three. These are going to be things you can try and do during the era, so the initiative is something that you can kind of uh, progress towards as you're playing the era, like whenever you do a thing, gain another thing. And the agenda is what you score at the end of the era. Maybe you'll gain two victory points for every building that you've constructed during the era. Additionally, each of the years are going to have two types of cards. You're going to have an aid card and you're going to have a pest card. Place the pest card first and then the aid card and do it for each year in each era. There are two years in each era, so you'll do six sets of these. Pest, then uh, the aid. Place them face down though, so you do not look at them and they're all randomized just like the era cards. Only eras need to actually be correct. The pest card is going to tell you uh, basically when you, where you need to place the sick people for that year. At the beginning of every year, you'll place out sick people. And then the aid card is something that you'll take care of at the end of the year. You'll check to see who has done what and you'll gain valuable bonuses. The last thing you're need, going to need in the game is you're going to need your main player board. 
This board is going to house a number of sick people. It's going to be where you're going to take your workers and place them out onto your grid. And it's also a place in which you'll have your buildings. Place all your buildings on the correct locations and all your resources on the spaces on the bottom marked with the resource icons. You're also gonna take your capital city and place it adjacent in an adjacent space of your plague doctor. And that is going to basically allow you to gain one resource of the type of the city location that you place. Each of the city locations have resources that you can gain when you choose the produce action. And that's pretty much the main setup of the game. There's a little bit more, but the basic idea is there. Player board, main board, capital city, where you're gonna do your your influence and your era board where you do the round to round stuff. So how, how do you play? Pest is played over a number of years and eras. Every two years, a new era triggers and there's an era phase. And every year, the year phase will trigger. At the beginning of the game, the first thing you do is your pest and your aid phase. Actually, you have this wonderful little player re reference board here that explains how these all work. But the first thing you do is you flip over your pest and then your aid. The pest will tell you where you place your sick people. Place one sick person in every single location that has a piece of wood on it. Place a sick worker in every village that has a specific um, leaf on it. Or place a character on a road icon that is a black horseshoe. Sometimes it'll even tell you a harbor space. Most of the icons on the board here, the main game board, are just in reference to help you know where to place sick people. After the first era, you'll actually be placing two sick people out for each location the pest card tells you to do so. And then the aid card, like I said, is flipped over. You read both of them, there's like flavor attached to them, but you'll read them and they'll tell you like what you'll gain at the end of the phase, provided you have the most influence. However, as the most influence might get a resource of their choice or a bread or a wood or a piece of food or something like that, etc., etc. Once you've gone through the pest and the aid phase, you'll do the action phase, which is based on your turn order. Uh, turn order is also based on your influence, but you can choose what you want for the first beginning of the game. When you do the action phase, you're gonna take a worker and place it on a three by three grid. When you place your worker down in one of the spaces, you will take the horizontal and vertical action. There are six actions total, and when you place a worker down, you'll get to do two of them. And whenever you have a worker on a space, you cannot place a worker back on that same space. It must be on a new space. When you start the game, you're only going to get two workers, but after the end of each era, you'll gain a new worker. So at the end of the game, you'll actually get up to four workers that you can place on your main actions board. Let's talk about the actions really quickly. One action is you can produce. Producing is essentially gaining all the resources from all the buildings on your game board that will give, that you have specifically healthy workers on. So for every building you place out on the game board and have a healthy worker working in that building, you'll gain the resource provided. There are exceptions to this rule, but I'll cover some of that in the review. The next thing that you can do is move. You'll move the Plague Doctor. He moves roughly two spaces around the board and movement's pretty straightforward. You move across the path. Whenever you move onto a space with a sick person, you'll collect that person. When there's multiple sick people, you can use, utilize something called like an encampment or you'll have to pay bread. Or if you walk onto a road that has a sick person, you'll utilize bread to feed them and place them into your infirmary. As you get more sick people, you have to place them on your like infirmary areas, and then when you have no infirmary areas left, you have to place them on an action space that kind of hinders that action or restricts you from having additional resources. And then eventually when all that's full up, you'll actually have to start losing victory points. Uh, the after movement is done, you'll actually gain the resource of wherever the space is that your Plague Doctor lands. And the Plague Doctor's position matters because that is where you are going to be able to place buildings, wherever you're gonna be able to build buildings. The next thing that you can do is build. Speaking of building, to build you can do one of two things. You can either A, build a building or buildings on your encampment space and or the location of your plague doctor, or you can build um, your, a capital building. Either way though, you just pay the resources for the building and it tells you underneath your building what the, what the building costs. Like for instance, this windmill is three wood and two rock and place it on the location of your doctor. You can never have more than one building of your type on a location, but other players may share that space. When you place a building down on one of these main little areas or little cities or towns, you'll score influence based on the number at the top of the building space. Towns are one, 
the villages are two, and then the the capitals are three. The numbers tell you. I might have gotten the names wrong. Um, additionally, you're going to be able to gain the resource token of the type and place it underneath your building marker to let you know that that's the resource you'll gain for the rest of the game, provided that you have a healthy person working there. Uh, building a main city is pretty simple. You'll just take one of these guys out and place it in your color in the middle of the game board. That's where the city is. And the city can be moved through as well. And it can be moved through for free. In fact, any space that you have a building on can actually be moved through for free. Those are the three main actions of the game on the top portion. On the horizontal portions, you're going to be able to A, build tech cards, which are simple. You'll be able to spend influence to take tech cards and place them on your board, which will score you victory points at the end of the game, as well as give you passive abilities. The ability to assign healthy workers to building spaces on your game board that will allow you to then produce more additional resources. And then the last thing is you'll be able to heal people. You'll be able to spend your herb resource, it's little, this little leaf here, and you can heal sick people. It doesn't matter where they are on your board, if they're sick, you can heal them by spending the herb, which you can then place them up into your healthy track. The healthy track will also, at a certain point, have enough workers that you will actually start gaining these potions that you can utilize to buy tech cards, but you can also gain them as you move along this influence track here to gain more of those. That's how you purchase the techs is by producing with healthy workers and moving up on the influence track. After you place a worker, you do uh, both one, we can do none, one, or both of the actions that are horizontal and vertical of your worker, you'll pass and the next player will do the same and you'll keep going until everybody has no workers left. Then you return your assistance back to your little area on the corner left of the side of your game board and then you will reset turn order based on your influence. Farthest ahead goes to the back, farthest behind goes to the front in turn order. You'll, do, you'll rinse and repeat and do that phase again and then you will trigger the era phase. Um, the era, what happens at the end of an era is you're gonna score your agenda cards. So the agenda here on this main area board here will say score a point for every two influence that you have. You'll do that. The capital uh, city phase will occur, um, which is basically you'll have little, these, you can also assign little workers in the capital city. See, there's a ton of stuff in this game. You can also assign your healthy workers to your little space on the capital city. And when you do that, you'll gain rewards. And if you have the most of them, you'll actually trigger this card here and you'll score additional bonuses for being first, second, or third. It's kind of like a race to give people back to the capital. After you've done that, then you can go ahead and discard any assigned sick people from the capital city. So they'll all actually just go away. They don't come back to you or go back to the board. And then you'll gain negative renown. This is when you have workers in your... Uh, in your negative sick area space. Now, finally, you're going to gain new assistants. So in this case, you'll go from two to three and then three to four with each new era. And that is how you play the game. Go from the first, second, and third era, and then finally you will score. And there's a boatload of scoring here, but I'll go through them really quick. You'll score points for the renown token. That's your victory points. They're little crowns that you'll get throughout the game. You'll score points for your imperatives, which means as you complete the imperative for each of the eras, you're gonna move moving up on this track here on the side of the board, and that will score you victory points. You will score points for healthy people on the top of your board. There's a, a number of points you can gain for having a number of them. Constructed buildings will score you points, which are labeled on the bottom, as well as for each row of constructed buildings on your game board, you will score the bottom portion of that. All your technologies have a value on them on the top right, which you will score, and your influence, your highest, the person with the highest influence will get five. Resources and coins, I think it's coins are two for, or one for one, or two for one, and resources are three for one. And then whoever has the most points is the winner, and you can keep track of all this. What? There we go. With uh, this score sheet here. Uh, the first game that we played uh, was pretty close. It was a high of 81 and a low of 49. So it wasn't a super far off scoring game. But there you go. That's the basics for how to set the game up and how to play. There's probably a few things I miss, but I think you get the gist of it from there. So I'm sure you've gathered it that uh, Pest is a rather large game and it has a lot of complicated aspects to it. 
Forgetting a little thing can turn the game a little lopsided. The first game that we played, I had forgotten, in fact, everybody at the table forgotten that the Eros 2 and 3 started producing double sick people instead of just the single sick people from Era 1. So we played with a heck of a lot less sick people, and that game was a lot easier on all players. We started having to not have to deal with a lot of the sick people that we normally would have to gather and place on our negative spaces on the game board. Um, and so playing with the additional sick people, maybe even just play with one for your first game, because the second time you play, well, the second time we played, it was a lot more challenging and you had to really, really m manage the different sick people so that you could gain as much value as possible without having to suffer the consequences of them, or maybe even being want wanting to like move less and less around the game board, or specifically ch trying to choose locations, because when you gain new locations too, when sick people start landing on your own spaces that you control, you have to put them in your sick bay. So you'll actually just start acquiring sick people. Your villages will be corrupted with plague eventually, even if you've cleaned out the whole area. And you'll have to dispose of those people, hopefully not dispose of them, but cure them, but could go either way, as well as any people that you pick up along your journeys in the game past. And uh, so there's a lot of micromanaging in this game. There's a lot of really tight actions that you need to take. There are only six things you really do in this game. Building things, producing resources, moving your plague doctor, gathering tech cards, placing down your healthy workers onto locations like the city and your game board to gain effects, and finally healing people, which is very simple. That's the easiest action. You pay the leaf, heal the guy up to the top. But there are intricacies to each of these actions. Remembering that you can do not only the buildings for your game board, but also for the city. Not only remembering that when you move, you gain the resource for when you land on a space. The era two is the double sick people, don't forget that one. Um, remembering that when you produce, you have to have a healthy citizen there, except except for your capital, except for your main factory. They are all labeled. They have a nice labeling system to remind you with little symbols saying, this building does not require a healthy person. The factory kind of works on its own. In fact, you don't even need to place a healthy worker there for any reason whatsoever. And placing healthy workers on your buildings in general will not give you value except for when you produce. So you want to decide how much resources you need and what type, making sure that you go to the right portions of the game board for the resources that you need. And remembering that you can never produce twice or move twice in the same turn. You have to do one from the horizontal row, which is like the aid and tech and placing out your character, um, healing your characters, and then one of the main actions in my opinion in the game, which is moving your dude, producing the resources, and building the three things you really need to do in this game to succeed. And of course, not neglecting any of the bonuses, not neglecting the fact that you are trying to complete your imperative each era, moving your marker up, which scores you victory points. And it's victory points for the top, for your, you get victory points for the, what, what is below you and all the ones additional down the line here. But you also are going to be working on your agenda, which is at the end of every era, completing the requirements to gain the victory points. I think it's called renowned. Uh, and so you kind of have to focus on those things. And at the end of every single year, you'll check to see, you'll gain bonuses for having farther influence on the table. So it's remembering to do all of those little things. But otherwise, it's a pretty simple worker placement. It's just that there are a lot of phases and like little technicalities you'll need to do throughout the game. This game feels like you are a plague doctor. You feel like you're moving across medieval Europe, curing the bubonic plague. And all while you're doing that, making your city all nice and shiny, every year somebody starts contracting the plague all over the place. And by the time year three is around, the board is covered with sickness. Your board is covered with sickness. And you are trying your best to ma maintain the status quo and hopefully gain just a little portion of the city uh, more as you go along trying to heal the sick. I thought that when I was looking at this board, it looked, looked like a dark and kind of menacing evil game, but it's really just more of like a sad game, a sad game of having to try and like pandemic kind of a thing, right? Where you're trying to save people, cure them, or put them to work so they have something to do and keep your beautiful illustrious city sick people free and as you get more sick people things start hurting you and uh, and hurting your chances of succeeding in the game I love the idea of the main city as well where you'll gain new buildings that you can kind of help with the progress of the whole world these will give you just big fat bonuses of influence and victory points along the way and then tech trees these little tech 
pieces you can use. You can have up to three of them. And even when you have three, you can actually trade new ones in and score the victory points for the ones that you get rid of, giving you new bonuses. Some of these are much better than others, but they're going to cost you additional beakers. These beakers are hard to get. The only way you're going to get them is moving up on this track here of influence. And even still, we only got five for that track, I think. But the main way is healing the sick and moving them up on this game board here, thusly scoring additional ones every time you produce. And there's also bonus actions that you can take with beakers. Beakers will let you move your uh, worker an extra space, or your plague doctor an extra space. So you can go up to three whenever you spend a beaker. And it's also a way to give you a bonus resource when you produce. So beakers can give you, even, there's even additional bonus actions on top of your actions, but not every action has a bonus action. So you have to keep track of that. The game is beautiful. It's a really huge game, which is a negative and a positive. Like this is a huge table. It is, it's a big table. And with five players, I have to extend the, I'd have to extend the board and whatnot so that somebody could play on the very far end here. So you have to have a really large space to play this game. This is not a small table game. This is a long game. We played with four players our first time learning the rules. Prepare for three and a half hours. Now, it's not as bad once you've played the game the first time and you'll learn all the little miss mess ups that you might have, or maybe we're just special and we happen to get more mess ups than the average person, but there are little things that you miss along the way in the first game, I would probably assume. And so your second game will be a lot quicker. Pro probably will be about 150 for five players and maybe about two hours for the average player length. So I think they get that about right. But remember your first game is going to be challenging. The rule book is well explained, but the negative is that the translations for this game are not perfect. The cards are not perfectly explained because the translation from the English, uh, the, the language to English uh, was off. Check the rule book. It has the tech tree, the tech cards has their like specific explanations of what they do and how they work and little additional bent details so that you'll get the gist of the idea. There's nothing I didn't really figure out after a few minutes, but there is definitely some writing errors, errors, <laughs> errors. Uh, the, the story for the game is wonderful. It has little additional kind of things that pop up that attach together for the yearly like details. The quarry villages as the disease spreads in the mountains, the small community of miners and their families were the first to fall victim and it keeps going from there. And then the next card details more about that specific year. So you get like a yearly report and there's a ton of extra aid and pest cards, which makes this game replayable over and over again, even with the city card as well. I actually really, really like this game, despite it having some flaws and it being a big game and being fairly complex and probably not a game for most beginning or even maybe intermediate players. This is a great worker placement with a great theme, unique aspects to it with some cool storyline things. So if you don't mind all the little details of the negatives that I've, I've explained, and if you're okay with a big long game, then Pest is definitely something to check out with a strong worker placement, a strong black death theme with beautiful miniatures, beautiful art, high quality pieces all around, then do definitely check out the Game Pest. I'm giving this a solid right in the middle recommendation, but for me personally, I like this game quite a bit, but I know it's not gonna sit with everybody quite well, so it'll be up to you. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Pest by Arcana Games. These guys are the ones who did Philharmonic, uh, which was a really great game, and this one was really cool too. I think I like the other one a little bit better than this one, but this one was still really cool. Uh, we're actually gonna play this one again with the same people I played for the first game, so because they wanna try and do it again, and, and they do it better now that they understand the game. So that, that's actually good to hear. That's always good to hear about a game is somebody wanting to replay it again, especially a big one like these. Usually it's like every like three months I can bring out a game like this and they'll want to play it. Do check out the live stream every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST and we do videos Monday through Friday. Uh, usually one day we skip. Maybe we'll, this one will come out probably Tuesday. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to curing the pest with you next time. We're the best. Oh, subscribe!